Hello my friends, I'm Frankie and welcome to Club Foodie. I've shared my weaknesses with you many times, but just to refresh your memory, here they are. Fresh baked bread, different types of sauces and pasta. As much as commercial pastas are readily available, making them from scratch is incredible and surprisingly very easy to make. In today's episode, I'll show you how to make my homemade pasta. If you are a true foodie, then you should make some. The freshness will elevate any pasta dish. In this video, I'm showing you the simple method to make it from scratch. So my friends, let's get cooking. On a clean work surface, we'll add the flour and form a well big enough to hold the eggs. So when it comes to the type of flour, I tried flour double zero and all-purpose flour. Both flours work well as long as you sift them. So it's up to you to choose which one you want to use. All right, when the well is formed, we'll add a couple eggs in the center with the addition of olive oil and a generous pinch of ground sea salt. We'll start beating the egg mixture and slowly incorporate the flour. This step cannot be rushed, so just take your time, although it goes pretty fast, and add a little flour until mostly mixed. Then we'll gather the ingredients by hand and start forming a ball. It will be sticky at first, but as we work everything together, it'll get smoother and less tacky. So we'll go ahead and start kneading it. As we do this step, if the dough gets dry and crumbles, we'll add a little bit of water at a time to moisten it. The thing is I never measured by weight, so sometimes there might be more flour than needed. So a few minutes later, when the dough is nice and smooth, we'll form a disc and wrap it up tightly in cling film before transferring it to the fridge for a couple hours, but I prefer to leave it for 24 hours. So the next day, we'll place the dough on a floured work surface and sprinkle with flour, making sure it's all nicely covered. Using a rolling pin, we'll flatten it out to an oval shape, long and wide enough so we can fold it like an envelope. This is what I mean. So we'll take one side and fold it halfway over, and then the same with the other side. Again, we'll flatten it out so we can reach a thickness of about 3 eighths of an inch to a maximum of half an inch. Otherwise, it won't go through the pasta machine. All right, let's start rolling it out. We'll set the machine to the widest setting, minus zero, and feed the dough through the rollers, supporting it as it comes out the bottom. It should come out nice and easy, just like this. As a result, it will get pretty long. So we'll just cut it in half to make it easier to work with. Then we'll fold it like an envelope again, sprinkle lightly with flour, and run it through on this setting three more times. By the way, my husband was cranking the machine, so if you can have someone helping you, it'll go faster. After the fourth time, we'll change the setting to one and run it through once, then change the setting to two and run it through again. We'll continue doing this with each higher setting until we get to the desired thickness we want. I'm making fettuccine, so I'm stopping after I run it through on setting number six. Just like earlier, if that dough gets too long, cut it in half. Next, we'll lightly dust the pieces with flour on both sides so they don't stick when we cut them, and spread it over. Now, we'll feed the dough through the cutters of the pasta machine. And here we have our fresh cut fettuccine noodles. We can either place them on a pasta drying rack or use them right away. And my friends, this is our homemade pasta. If you love pasta like I do, freshly made is far better than the commercial ones. It's easy to make 
It tastes better, plus it cooks much quickly. Another bonus is you can add tasty and colorful ingredients to the dough, like spinach, carrots, beets, and many more. I hope you give it a try soon and be sure to visit clubfoodie.com for ingredient amounts and more info. Until next time my friends, bon appétit! Thank <laughs> you.